welcome back to our show from Metreon in San Francisco. Well, we've had a chance to look at all of the games based on Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, and I think we can comfortably say that the quality has been varied at best. Well, why don't we see what happens when the citizenry rises up against the Trade Federation and has a battle for Naboo? This is Panaka. We're under attack. We need assistance. Using an enhanced version of the Rogue Squadron engine, Battle for Naboo gives you a taste of life as a typical Naboo security officer, caught in the middle of the Trade Federation's assault on the planet. My family could be in that camp. I'm going in. Battle for Naboo's visuals take full advantage of the RAM expansion pack. The horizon stretches for ages over the countryside. Gunships glide over deep blue waters. I copy. Factor 5's specialty is sound, and it shines here. I've lost my droid! Sound effects are crystal clear and straight from the film. Blaster bolts whine, droid fighters howl, and the score rumbles powerfully in the background. The controls in the game are simple, with steering on the analog stick and buttons for other maneuvers. You can test your piloting skills with the many different ships in your squadron. New ships open up as you progress. Battle for Nubu is not without shortcomings. Mission goals tend to be more about guarding the action than being in the middle of it. Protect the convoy as it retreats. Still, screaming through space in a swarm of droids is an immersive adrenaline rush. There's too many of them! And makes you feel like a full citizen of the Phantom Menace universe. Overall, we give Battle for Nubu a 4 out of 5. When you look at the clean and impressive graphics that Factor 5 was able to achieve on Battle for Naboo for the N64, it almost makes you shudder to think of what they might pull off on the GameCube. Now, speaking of graphics, many people have been eagerly anticipating American McGee's Alice, and there's no question, this is one of the most impressive looking games I have ever seen. Unfortunately, graphics are not all that a game is about. Save us, American McGee's Alice takes the already demented world of Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland and through the looking glass and demands it further. The result is a game that is both stunning in its graphical prowess and art design. McGee's rendering of the story is significantly darker and very hallucinogenic. Character designs and animations are wonderfully expressive. And early in the game, you'll catch yourself proclaiming out loud how cool it looks. Complimenting the visuals is the sound. Please don't dawdle, Alice. We're very late indeed. The voice acting is top-notch and adds both twisted humor and menace to the experience. You've gone quite mangy, Cat, but your grin's a comfort. And you've picked up a bit of an attitude. Unfortunately, that begins to give way to the experience of actually playing the game. Most of the problems are in the controls. It becomes very apparent early on that Alice doesn't respond in a very timely nor accurate manner to your commands, making the numerous jumps and other time-sensitive actions unnecessarily aggravating. Also, there is the combat, which takes up a large portion of the game's action. It's best described as sluggish and unsatisfying. Long-range weapons take a while to recharge, and in the meantime, you have to use the poor controls to dodge your enemy's attacks. So, Alice ends up being a game that's wonderful to look at, but not terribly thrilling to play. It's not unplayable by any means, and patience rewards you with great visuals. But gamers with a limited budget can find far more well-rounded games. Overall, we give American McGee's Alice a 3 out of 5. You've taken your sweet time. Well, unfortunately, Alice fell a little bit too far down the rabbit hole. Now, in our opinion, puzzle games just don't get enough respect. And back in the early days of Microsoft Windows, a lot of people spent many monotonous hours playing solitaire. Thankfully, though, Microsoft has broken that up a bit with their own collection of classic board games perfect for a rainy day. Microsoft's classic board games includes 12 games that your mother would recommend. Among them are chess, dominoes, and go. Visually, you'll find 2D representations of the game's counterparts. The graphics do the job with an easy-to-use interface. Music consists of the same 14 songs for each game. 
and the sound effects are a bare minimum. The game is controlled with your mouse. One great feature is during most games you have the option to view legal moves. Because the game offers easy to understand rules, techniques, and strategies in its help menu, Classic Board Games is a fantastic learning tool for games which you may not be familiar with. We give it a 2 out of 5. One of the best things about playing board games against your computer is that when you win, it doesn't whine. The Smuggler's Run involves you attempting to outrun the authorities, and with this following cheat, you're given one of the best ways to cross the border undetected. If you're down with the underground lifestyle of Smuggler's Run on the PS2, then you won't mind some cheats to add some funkiness to your mission. To enter any cheats, first pause the game. To gain invisibility, press R1, L1, L1, R2, L1, L1, L2. And to grab more air, press L1, R1, R1, L2, R2, R2. Coming up on GameSpot TV, Capcom's Mega Blue Man has a new game out, and we wonder, what's up with the floating heads? And we get to drive in our preview of 18 Wheeler. Take it off!